Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this Edge TX snippet, I'm going to show you a really cool feature for utilizing the Radio Master DIY switches that they just released on the market. If you're not familiar, I recently installed one of the Radio Master DIY switches in my radio and I use the momentary switch. They have a latching switch and they have a momentary switch. So a momentary switch means either on or off. Now that's a binary feature, just like a light switch. You either turn a light on or off. And while I used it for a really cool feature of resetting my timer, I just wanted more out of it. You know, the button's there and I knew it could do more than just be a timer reset. So I came up with some really cool logic and I can't wait to show it to you. The logic for this setup is breathtakingly simple, and we're gonna take advantage of the edge switch. So here's what you're gonna do. Go into your logical switch setup, and you can use any logical switch you want. I've already got some stuff up top, so I used uh, logical switch 10. I already have some stuff up there, and I did have to use a production radio because uh, that's where I have the switch installed. And by the way, you can use any momentary switch on your radio. You can use T5 down, T5 up, T6 down or T6 up, and in my case, I moved my momentary switch over to this side of the radio, so you can use this one as well. You can use that one if you want for this, this technique. It'll work just the same. I'm using the DIY button on the back. That's the one I'm using. Okay, let's get into the logic. The way I do this is really simple. It's with edge switches. So I, on logical 10, 11, and 12, I added three edge switches, and I assigned them to my switch SJ. And let's take a look at what I did for the configuration in the editor. What this logic says using the edge function is that when SJ is down, there's two values, there's two time values. The first time is the minimum time for activating the switch. And the second one is the maximum time the switch can be activated. So what that means is when this switch is pressed from any period between zero and one half of a second, it activates. That's all it says. And the duration I set for two, just to help you see the logical switch function light up on the monitor. Okay, so that's the first one. All right, a look at the next logical switch, logical 11, shows the same kind of configuration and what I'm using is a range of one second to two seconds. So what this means when we look at it is when SJ is down for a period of at least one second, but no more than two seconds, then it activates. And then finally, L12 says when SJ is down for a period of two to three seconds, then it activates. And there's also a duration in there of two seconds, just so the light stays on. Now, you can repeat this as much as you want. You can add switches all the way up to 20 seconds if you can remember that many functions in a row. I thought two or three switch functions would be very usable, so that's where I stopped. I just used three. So what that means is that this button now supports three discrete functions depending on how long I press the button. And you don't even have to worry about having an internal clock or counting one 1,000 in your head. I've got that resolved too. Over on the special functions page, I started with special function number 10 because I have stuff up top so I couldn't use those spots. I have SJ down playing a sound beep one for one second. And all that does, the second I press that button, the radio beeps and it repeats that beep every one second. So it works out really well. All you have to do is press the button and when you hear one beep, you let it go. When you hear two beeps, you let it go. Or when you hear three beeps, you let it go. And depending on which one you let it go, that determines the edge function that's used and the special function that correlates for that logical switch. So remember, I use logical 10, 11, and 12 for my edge switches. We'll go back and look at that real quick. So there's 10, 11, and 12. And then on my special functions, those special functions react to 10, 11, and 12. And all I have it doing, you can set these special functions to be anything you want. All I did in my case is I have logical 10 playing my flight timer, logical 11 reading out my transmission power, and logical 12 reading out my receiver quality. You could also have it reset your clock or take a snapshot or do any other function that's available as a special function just keyed off a of logical 10. Pretty cool, huh? Let me show you how it works. All right, I've got the volume turned all the way up and I'm gonna pull the radio a little bit close so you can hear it. And I'm gonna flip over to the logical switch page so you can see the logical switch activation. So I'm gonna press it once and we'll listen for a beep. Okay, so it just called out seven minutes and you heard the beep, L L10 lit up because I pressed and released it in one second. Now we're gonna press and hold it for two seconds. This is really easy. It's a lot easier than you think it would be. Okay, that was logical 11. Now we'll do logical 12 and we'll hold it for three beeps. There we go. So logical 10, 11, and 12, we just turned our single binary momentary switch into a multifunction switch. And again, you can add as many of these as you have memory to support. 
That wraps up my Edge TX snippet on how to get extra functionality out of your momentary switches using Edge Switch Logic. I hope you liked the video, and if you did, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy, and go fly something. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.